Well, I admit this is not going to be fun, but you still have to know about the mass atrocities that occurred throughout the 20th century. So gird thyself and let's look squarely at the profound horrors that humans are capable of. Now, unfortunately, humans found more ways to kill each other in the 20th century than in any other century in our collective history. And one major cause of death was the two world wars, which combined led to a total of about 120 million deaths on the upper end of the estimates. And something like half of those deaths were civilians that perished through bombings and famine. And then another major cause of atrocities was new technology. For example, World War II ushered in the perfection of aerial warfare, which included the horrifying reality of firebombing, which set entire urban areas on fire and killed hundreds of thousands in their wake. Also, the atomic bomb was responsible for the death of hundreds of thousands of Japanese civilians in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But by far the most sinister cause of mass atrocities in the 20th century was the rise of extremist political ideologies, which aimed to destroy entire populations on account of race or ethnicity. And for the rest of the video, we're going to consider three examples of these. And look, side note here, I know there are so many atrocities that should be named and justice requires that they are named and, and that the dead are honored in these. And, and I know I'm, it's almost criminal not to mention them, but for the sake of this curriculum, I'm just gonna handle these three. So the first major atrocity in this category occurred in the beginning of the 20th century, namely the Armenian Genocide. Now remember that in 1915 to 1916, the Ottoman Empire began a program of revisioning their state as primarily Turkic under the influence of the Young Turks, and that cast suspicion on the large Armenian Christian population. Additionally, since they were in the midst of World War I, Ottoman authorities feared that the Armenians might support invading enemy armies against the empire. Therefore, Ottoman authorities began a program of mass extermination that included outright slaughter of Armenians, as well as forcible relocation in which the people were malnourished and brutalized. And in the end, somewhere between 600,000 and a million Armenians were killed in the Ottoman Genocide. And then during World War II, some of the most profound human suffering occurred at the hands of Nazi Germany. You see, a key ingredient in Hitler's extreme form of German nationalism was the desire to create a purified German race, and therefore he used his power to exterminate all the groups that he believed tarnished that purity. And it was a program known as the Final Solution, and though it targeted the Roma and homosexuals and disabled people, political enemies, and several other groups, by far the group who felt the hardest blow of this policy was the Jewish population. Before the war began, the Nazis enacted the Nuremberg Laws, which stripped the rights of Jews and forced them into ghettos where they were marginalized, abused, and brutalized. But once the war began, Hitler made use of industrial technologies to construct concentration camps where Jews were sent for hard labor and extermination camps where they were sent to be murdered with industrial precision and efficiency. And the largest of these camps was called Auschwitz, and at its height, 12,000 people were killed every every day by means of large-scale gas chambers. And in the end, about six million Jews were put to death in this way, and about five million people that belonged to the other targeted groups died as well. And finally, in the later part of the 20th century, we have the Cambodian Genocide. So at the end of the 1970s, a communist group called the Khmer Rouge took power in Cambodia under the leadership of Pol Pot. And with China's support, Pol Pot began a program to transform Cambodia into an agrarian state and completely erase any remnants of Western influence. And therefore, he emptied the cities and forced people to work in labor camps and targeted the education population who were most influenced by Western ideas for extermination. And while Pol Pot's program wasn't as clearly racially motivated like the atrocities in Nazi Germany and the Ottoman Empire, it was still responsible for the death of about a quarter of the Cambodian population. And with that, we've reached the end of Unit 7, and I'll see you in Unit 8. And I wish I could tell you that things got happier in that unit, but, uh... <laughs>